Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Last time we introduced the Schrodinger equation for a single particle of mass m moving under the influence of a potential, and you can see that equation behind me. The solution of that equation gave us a wave function, and so what does, how does that wave function describe the motion of a particle quantum mechanically? In classical mechanics, a particle's motion is described by position, momentum, energy. So what does that wave function tell us? That's the subject of today's lecture, the meaning of the wave function. Okay. Well, quantum mechanics is a statistical theory. Now, I say that now, and we're going to see many examples of why that's the case and why, how we can use it. The next chapter is really going to bring, bring to the front a lot of interesting phenomena when we, when we discuss the quantum theory of measurement. So, the statistical theory comes about from the interpretation of the magnitude squared of the wave function as a probability density for the position of the particle at time t. This is, this is fundamental. This is, this is really how a lot of things um, flow from this. And uh, we want to explore this in some detail. I smiled when I said flow because that's something interesting with regard to flow of probabilities coming up in a few lectures. But, okay. This also explains the, f the phrase stationary state because those stationary states that we introduced in the previous lecture, which occur when the potential energy is independent of time, their probability density is independent of time. And you can see that from the equation. Now you can see where normalization comes in. Before I get to that, if we have a particular volume or region in the space, Rd, where the particle is moving, one, two, or three dimensions, for us it will be mostly one dimension. If we want to find the probability that the particle is in that region, we just integrate the probability density over that region. And because of the interpretation of the wave function, its magnitude squared as a probability density, we need the integral of the probability density over the space of interest to be 1. So that means that there must, there's a probability of finding the particle somewhere, but probability densities are, are um, their integral must give us 1. Okay, now that's why normalization is very important for that interpretation. That's where we're, why we're always going to insist on normalization. Whenever we find a wave function, normalize it. What if it can't be normalized? Hmm, interesting question. We'll come up. To, we'll meet something related to that later. One of the things we see is that um, if we multiply any wave function by a factor e to the minus e to the i alpha, so a, a, a by a complex number of magnitude 1, it doesn't change the probability density. In that sense, it's the way it's multiplying, well, the, the phrase we often use is an overall, an overall constant phase is unobservable in the, in the sense that it does not affect the probability density. Now, I had a a comment related to that in the previous chapter when we talked about state vector. So think about that and go back and look at uh, where I talked about that in the previous chapter. Once we have a probability density, then we can talk about a variety of other statistical quantities. We can talk about the average position of the particle. We can talk about the variance of the position about this average. And we're going to see that these are very interesting quantities. We will meet, we will 
meet them again in the next chapter, but we will deal with them in very specific physical examples. But this probabilistic interpretation is going to underlie the rest of this chapter also and the examples that we treat in this chapter. So, first chap the first example we wanted to look at is the free particle. And we're going to look at both the classical mechanical free particle and the quantum mechanical free particle. So remember, free particle means the potential is zero. Okay. So that means classically, if there's no force, if we think of Newton's equations, F equals MA, we write down those equations. We'll do it in three dimensions because it's just as easy in this case. And that's a pretty easy um, differential equation to solve. We see that that's the same as d by dt of m r dot. r is a position. And that is a, a manifestation of conservation of momentum. We can integrate that again, and we see that we have the position as a function of time in terms of the initial position plus p over m times t. We can also write down the total energy. There's no potential energy, so it's just kinetic energy. So we see classical mechanically that the momentum, the position, and the total energy of the free particle can all be determined simultaneously. Of course they can. It sounds like a weird thing to say. We know that if we toss a particle up in the air with appropriate measurements, we can measure it measuring apparatus, we can measure velocity, if we know its mass, we can get uh, momentum, position as a function of time, we can use momentum to get energy. We can get them all at the same time in principle. I only point that out because that's going to be a problem quantum mechanically. But let's go to the quantum mechanical free particle. Okay. The Schrodinger equation in that case, let's just do one dimension. It makes it a little bit easier. It is given by this equation below. And we can kind of clean up the constants a little bit by lumping them all into one constant. And we get the equation 231, where k squared is 2me over h bar squared. So the energy in that particular case is positive. Uh, I forgot to mention something. Let me come back to it. Free particle for quantum mechanically. We have three cases e greater than zero, e equals zero, an easy case, and e less than zero. Well, and I'll leave this as an exercise. It's, a, it's an interesting exercise. You don't see it in all the books. Uh, and it puzzled me the first time I learned this, but e less than zero is not physically realistic. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, this is interesting because it's a, for e less than zero, you can get a solution of the equation but that solution doesn't satisfy the, the physical characteristics that we demanded and talked about in the last lecture. It has a cusp at the origin. So check that out for yourself if you have the time and are so inclined. It's a good exercise. So back to the free particle equation, quantum mechanically, with e greater than zero. We can easily, and I, you know, sometimes instructors say easily a little too often, but this, you can verify that the general solution of equation 231 is given by 5x is a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x, where in general a and b are complex constants. Now, these functions e to the i k x and e to the minus i k x are interesting. They're, they have a physical interpretation. They're actually eigenfunctions of the momentum operator. Remember from the previous chapter, the momentum operator 
uppercase P, we'll use uppercase for operators, is h bar over i d by dx, this integral operator. So how do I know it's an eigenfunction? Check it directly. Let p act on phi of x, and that's, this is a general form, but if you let it act on e to the, we can do it at the same time, plus or minus i k x, what you end up getting is plus or minus h bar k e to the plus or minus i k x. So you get a constant times the same function. It's an eigenfunction. So e to the i k x is an eigenfunction with eigenvalue h bar k. And e to the minus i k x is an eigenfunction with eigenvalue minus h bar k. So e to the i k x then would correspond to a particle moving to the right with positive momentum h bar k. And e to the minus i k x corresponds to a particle with momentum minus h bar k moving to the left. Keep this interpretation in mind. It's going to come back over and over in this chapter. Now, we only solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation. We, we can easily put in time-dependence. We know what it is, and we saw that how to do that from the last lecture, but let's just move on with this for the moment. Now, the quantum mechanical free particle, let's, we're going to look at this in a little more detail. Moving to the right with the momentum h bar k is described by this wave function. <clears throat> now remember I told you, normalize. Okay, but let's look at this in a little more detail. The probability density given by this wave function is constant. Now that's interesting. That tells me wherever we look on the real line, we have the same probability of finding this particle. That is, there's no particular place that it should be. So normalizing this, well, you can look at this expression. We can't normalize that over the entire line. The integral is infinite. So what do we do? Well, there are some things we need to look at here. This issue of normalizing functions like this, which uh, on the surface don't appear to be normalizable, that's an interesting topic, and it's a technical topic that I've, I've given you a reference over here, but that's just for, for you maybe to look, look at in your leisure. You're not going to be responsible for that in the course. But then the question is, how do we deal with it? Well. One way of dealing with it is through the concept of a wave packet. So we're going to take a superposition. Remember, quantum mechanics is linear. We can superpose solutions of a specific form. A of k, e to the i k x, we're going to take a limited number of k values, wave numbers, that decay in a certain way. So a of k is the amplitude, and we don't have any restriction on k, so we're going to take this integral, this. All right, and that's how we make a wave, e to the i k x, we view as a wave, the solution of the Schrodinger equation, describing wave mechanics. we're going to take a superposition of these waves, a packet of these waves of a specific shape. And that shape we're going to choose is a Gaussian. So there's a number of, of um, parameters in here. C is a parameter. Alpha and square root of pi comes along for a reason that uh, I'll explain in a little bit. But the constant c is referred to as the amplitude. And at x equal plus or minus 2 alpha, these are the 
boundaries on either side for which were for where the wave packet is reduced in amplitude by a factor of 1 over e. And we identify the alpha with what we call the width of the wave packet. So if we plug in this value for A of k into uh, this expression for the Gaussian, we end up with this expression. Now we're going to choose C so that we have a normalized wave function. But we can actually do this integral, and I'm not going to go through the details. The, the um, argument on the exponential that's highlighted here, we can complete the square. We can use this famous expression for the Gaussian integral. Now I say famous because it comes up all the time and it is something you should you, you should look at, eventually you should get to the point where you look at it and you say, ah, I know what that is, I know what its value is. Okay. So then, we have this expression, we, we look at the normalization condition, we do the integral, and we end up with A value for the constant and the normalized wave function for the Gaussian wave packet. And we see that it has a single parameter now, alpha. Okay, and that allows us to play with the shape of the wave packet, respecting normalization, play with the width effectively. Okay. We're going to meet wave packets later on when we in, in chapter three, and the statistical nature of wave functions will also come into play when we look at uncertainty and wave packets and a number of other interesting things. So that's a good place to stop for today. So go through the calculations, think about these concepts. They're pretty deep concepts, but in laying them out in this way, we can work with them, and we will do that over the next few examples. And so next time, I'm going to start with kind of one of the paradigm examples of quantum mechanics, motion in one dimension, the square well, where all these concepts will come into play. So see you next time. Bye.